everybody this is a mega quick one um i was just reading this article and yes it's the bbc which is why i'm so surprised and i was just like am i really seeing this so i thought i've got to bring it to you guys all we hear is doom and gloom i don't watch tv i can't watch it it's just yeah tv it's just a load of bollock sorry but it is um but i was just reading an, an article in the telegraph telegraph and there was a link through to the bbc website i didn't even know i was going to be clicking through to that i just clicked on the link that talked about there's actually been professors at edinburgh that are saying that we should ease the lockdown and stop overreacting so i clicked on it and it was at the bbc and i'm like what so i just wanted to bring this article to you um, you won't see me today. I'll, I haven't set it up the software to do it because I didn't know I was going to be bringing this video. So it's just me talking today. So coronavirus, is it time to free the healthy from restrictions? And this is really coming from the BBC. I, I'm absolutely gobsmacked. Just, you know, not a lot shocks me, but this did. The constant stream of bad news on coronavirus from the rising number of deaths to doctors and nurses risking their lives because of a lack of protective equipment and TikTok dancing, may I add, has understandably caused great anxiety. That much is clear from the proportion of adults worried about the threat they believe the virus poses to themselves. Older people are the most concerned and even among younger groups, the majority believe they are at risk. OK, so there's the age groups. So obviously we've got the older, the more concerned, but that's still a lot for the younger ones. But have we got this out of perspective? How much actual risk does coronavirus present? Now, this is refreshing to see this article in the mainstream media. We've all been talking about this, but it is a sign at least that we can hope because we know that it's propaganda so when the propaganda is going the other way the more positive way then that's got to be a good sign and i'll take i'll take a good sign where i can get it and i'm taking this one talks about the people that are most at risk are the older people but the young people of course are still dying by late april there had been more than 300 deaths among the under 45s what is more, there are many more who were left seriously ill, struggling with the after effects for weeks. Remember me telling you I got pneumonia four years ago, and my whole family did, and I'm left with scarring on my lung. Um, no one tested me for what I had, what strain I had. No one bothered, and I'm left very, very poorly from that, with damage to the, actually around my heart, I had inflammation. So you know i'm left with this this health condition now and severe asthma but nobody's investigating that or even knows what strain i had of virus or bacteria so i don't know how many people are going to be left with what i've got so i just don't understand this urgency and the way that the whole world's been locked down i just don't get it when there's more severe illnesses um, sorry, so most deaths have been among old people. Now we look at the deaths here. Now remember, these, these deaths are fake, remember. They, they, they're recording COVID-19 deaths for motorbike accidents, car accidents, people that are dying of cancers. That it, Ultimately, they die of pneumonia. The cancer is the main cause, but quite often we hear... That they they contracted pneumonia and and passed away sadly passed away, but where they were putting pneumonia before and not the actual strain or the reason for the pneumonia, it's now just COVID. We don't have any pneumonia deaths in it, apparently. We don't have any flu deaths anymore. It's just COVID. So, I would take these figures with a pinch of salt. Okay, twenty five thousand. Right. Our constant focus is on the most negative impacts. Uh, yet yeah, we've noticed of the ec epidemic means we have lost sight of the fact that viruses, the virus causes a mild to moderate illness for many. This is from the University College of London, not the Imperial of Notice, which is where that dodgy Neil Ferguson is at, the one that was breaking the rules yesterday. 
and got the sack. The expert in clinical data science believes it is important not to jump to conclusions of the deaths of the younger, seemingly healthy adults. Some could have had health conditions that had not been diagnosed. There will be otherwise healthy people who have died, as happens with everything from heart attacks to the flu. There you go. In future, we need to stop looking at coronavirus through such a narrow lens. Instead, we should take more account of the indirect costs, such as rising rates of domestic violence in lockdown, mental health problems and the lack of access to health care more generally. This is so refreshing. A nasty flu for many. On Sunday, Boris Johnson is expected to set out the restrictions to how it will, it will be eased in England, but they do expect to extend the lockdown by a further three weeks, by the way, guys, but it will be slowly eased. So we're still locked down, but with some easing of, you know, more people at work and whatever. But some believe we do not need to be so draconian. Edinburgh University, another university here, and a group of London-based academics published a paper this week arguing restrictions could be lifted quite significantly if the most vulnerable were completely shielded. Now, remember, this was how we wanted to go originally. We were going for the herd immunity. We were sending the healthy out and shielding the, the elderly and the vulnerable and then shielding their carers, OK? But then we had the massive U-turn, thanks to that Professor Ferguson, who broke his own rules anyway. You couldn't make it up. They probably will make a movie out of this one day, you know. It'll be go down as the biggest hoax in history. There's a, you know, a China just laughing at us, you know. Um, so they want it lifted significantly. Um, that would require the continued isolation of these individuals, that's fair enough, and the regular testing of their carers, or shielders, as the researchers call them. If we could protect them, that would require very good access to quick testing and protective equipment. The researchers believe we could lift many restrictions and allow a controlled epidemic in the general population, i.e. herd immunity. Good hand hygiene, isolating when you have symptoms and voluntary social distancing where possible would be needed. But people could return to work and school in a matter of months. The majority could even be eating in restaurants and going to cinemas. For the non-vulnerable population, coronavirus carries no more risk than a nasty flu. An expert in infectious diseases who led the research, Professor Mark Walhouse. If it wasn't for the fact it presents such a high risk of severe disease in vulnerable groups we would never have taken the steps we have and closed down the country if we can shield the vulnerable well there is no reason why we cannot lift any of the restrictions it's come at a huge economic social and health cost it's about getting the balance of risk right this is positive um it really is positive uh to be on the bbc um, it was come out on the 7th, so it was a couple of days ago. Where are we now? The oh, yeah, it was yesterday, sorry, today. I thought it was on the 9th for some reason. Um, originally, it is a point others have made. More are coming out. Look, Cambridge University has highlighted evidence which shows the risk of dying from coronavirus is very similar to the underlying risk of age groups from the early 20s of upwards of dying they would have died anyway so here we have the normal death rate for males in the blue the normal death rate for females in the yellow line going up there and the coronavirus death rate in the red blobs look see it's pretty straightforward it would have happened anyway these are three separate places three separate um specialists and academics saying this right this can only be good guys the mainstream media are the mouthpiece the propaganda for the deep state for whoever's in charge i don't think boris is in charge i think they've kicked into the curb where is he he doesn't look right is he a clone i ain't kidding this this there's something going on here okay is this because that professor's been disgraced and it was all him that wanted the lockdown so they look that ridiculous now they're gonna have to u-turn 
Uh, for children, as you can see on the graph, the risk from the virus is so small that you might be better off worrying about other things after the first year of life, cancers, accidents and self-harm are the leading causes of death. Wow, okay. Uh, Stanford University in the States have been trying to count the risk another way, equating it to that which we face from dying while driving. That's how much of a risk you have of dying from this. It's like the common cold. So... There you go, guys. People, um, people are actually coming out now, academics, and saying this publicly because before they were scared to. And on the BBC, may I add, I'll pop the link to this in the description. Um, I just wanted to share it with you. There's two thousand two hundred twenty-four comments. Wow, I wasn't so I wasn't expecting to do this today, um, but there you go. I'm just working on a, um, a bunny video, so I was just editing that when I was looking at this article. So if you're interested in bunnies and you're here for bunnies, there's one coming up, very, very nice one. But if you want to hear any news articles, then there you go. Right, folks, take care, much love, and stay safe. And keep talking, keep talking about this, don't just blindly follow the rules you know i'm not telling you to go and break the rules but just keep talking keep telling someone and then they tell someone that there's something going on take care much love